soon enough, you will forget. Thank you for joining us once again, everyone. I am David Legan, a.k.a. Sylvanov the Dark Druid, and I'll be your storyteller and host for the evening. And before we get started and rejoin our cadre of undead persons, allow me and allow them to introduce themselves, our players for the evening. Hello, everyone. My name is Michael Walsh. I am known on social media as Ventry 1399 and I will be playing Carlisle Jacob Miller in Hello, oh, hello. I am Ash Daniels. You can find me as Shapeshifter on social media, and I will be playing Jacqueline Deary. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. My name is Trevor Chapman. I go by Ratnaf on the social medias, and tonight I am playing Ricardo Sway. Hey, y'all. I'm Sail Irish on Twitch, and I will be playing Javier Grillo. Hey. Um, I'm Morgan. I am playing Melissa Natalie Coley, aka Melancholy, and I go by Sleepy Sheepy on social media. And you may notice that most of us are costumed the same as we were when last we met. It is because this is the same evening still going on. We rejoin our cast of characters as they are at the Marrakesh farm, having returned Jacqueline Deary to her home the place where she was found delivered whatever you would call it now the property law firm of cj milliner under direct control of mr javier grio an interesting evening we've been having as they've just gotten to the Marrakesh farm. A place of note of what is known in the ledgers of the Giovanni and those of the clans of death as a dark event. It is here where Jax faces and is confronted in some way by Mel, her childer whom she thought would never know that detail, was told, promised that her memory would never return. Mr. Grio, drawn to the exact same place as his quest for a currency, starts having gained knowledge of the existence of a baned spirit in the domain of Prince William, traveled here, meeting up with other members of the Hakata, placing them as Lego bricks in a piece to a puzzle to get what's his. It is there we re rejoin as Jax and Mel, Mel leading her away from the other three past the front door of the main gathering hall, the temple, the church of the Brotherhood of Malachi once led by the infamous Ezekiel Ephraim White. So I as mean, we're walking away, um, I'm, I'm saying to her, Mel, Mel, stop. Mel, stop. And as we get there, I pull away, stop. What are you doing? 
I, I, this is crazy. If I were in your position, I would not be buddy buddy grabbing my murderer by the hand, dragging them away. Like, what, what are you doing? Hey, do you know how long I've been looking for you? I know. I, I received some of your messages, and I, I can't believe you managed to get past everything. I blocked you. You s still managed to find me and reach out to me somehow. I I know. You've been looking for me for a while. Yeah. I don't think you fully realize what you did to me. You know? You always were kind of sheltered and given this place. Yeah. Makes sense. Want to take a guess? There it is, in your face, Jax. You don't know shit. Even your childer is having to tell you your view of the world is a pen in a paper breaking a hole. I... <laughs> How I took your life and then made you a monster. <laughs> That's um, what I did. What's around us right now? There's the, the left hand or uh, walking away and towards the right. The right hand side of the temple to the further right between you there are some cabins. There's a a eating hall. Um, not that you know the details of this, Melissa, but Jax, you were. The buildings are still here. They haven't disappeared. This is an open area between them that was used for games or instruction or whatever. It's just an open, nice green space. So like, this place was all you really knew, right? Your world? Yeah, yeah pretty much. Pretty small pond. See, there was a time when I felt really sorry for you. you know? I thought you were being, well, hidden away here. I wanted to sh I wanted to show you that there's more to life and shit, you know? That the world was bigger than this stupid little farm. You know? You sound so much like Abigail. She wanted to do the same thing, too. That's... Actually, how I found you, she uh, showed me to one of the computer internet cafes, and I just went online and found your page. Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, cool. You see, what you took from me was more than just my life, you know. She you took away- The voice of Helen in the back of your head. She took everything! You took everything from me. You even took my ambition, you know? I can't even fucking touch my phone without it fucking frying on me anymore. Let alone, you know, work a computer or anything. Can't, can't go back to see my parents again. Hey. And you know, do you remember Helen? Because I introduced you to my friend, my friend, you know, remember her? She's a, she's locked up in a, a psych ward right now because she had to she had the audacity to come and help me when I was in trouble. When that fucking Rico, whatever the fuck his name is, guy broke into my apartment and 
uh, level the shotgun at her head. And I almost ripped his head off. It was pretty fucking cool, honestly. Uh, but yeah, no. Uh, so so we, you can also add Helen to other lives that you've wrecked, by the way. The rapid flash of every face you've ever known. What? What you gonna do? That's... That's it, right? We're dead now. After all that, I, I don't understand how you can just be so... Whatever about it. I mean, for me, I get that now you can't go back to your family. I can't go back to mine either. And I've been devastated ever since over it. How can you just have this type of attitude um, about it? The voice of your mother answers you sobbing. You did that to her. That was all you. You uh, did that. Where was that you didn't post have again? To. That post with all like uh, Abby and Jax's heights on it. Uh, it's back behind you, towards the front of the building. Yeah. Um, and the others. Yeah, that's not it. Um. Yeah. Um. We're just gonna go look around. Essentially, what we're looking for right now is something to, well, break, like a sign to rip off, a window to smash. There are anything. windows on each side of the door of each cabin. There's a, a pair of windows on either side of the entry door going into the cabin. There's also windows on the sides of the cabins that allow in light. Uh, like you would expect to see it at some kind of camp or summer camp that that you've seen before. Yeah, so we're yeah, gonna take a rock. They're there, and we are. We're gonna take a rock, and we're gonna uh, start smashing some windows. So all of you definitely hear the sudden smashing of glass coming from the direction where Mel and Jackson walked. And I'm going to reach out and try to stop her. Stop! What are you doing? This is... This was my home. You can't just... Was, Jax. Was your home. It's a fucking dump now. Come with me. And I'm going to lead her over to... So we were by the temple originally, right? Sure. Yep. And I'm going to lead her inside. And behind one of the temple benches, I'm going to show her a whole bunch of... They look like basically pictures that were burned onto wood and carvings of animals and names and I show her this and I say this is something that me and another person here had put together this is basically our family tree on the back of this bench and this was my family as I'm sure you've heard that word be thrown around quite a bit around here um this was my life. This was my everything. Yeah. Uh, so that wood thing, uh, what, were you like just showing it to her? No, with some awareness. That is three successes and one of them. So, as she's talking, 
And as you respond, sure enough, strangely, there's still that scent of age old dried blood hangs in the air in the woods. And even as you move your fingers along it, it releases a certain odor, um, death, decay, torture, terror. The smells intensify. You can, you pick up on every little nuance as what you read in the papers, what you saw online, the the snippets in the news before they were attempted to be eradicated. You could almost picture it in your head. There was a slaughter here of everyone she ever knew. And you could smell it. Hell, you can damn near taste it. That's a pretty fucked up sensation. Uh, so Mal's gonna sort of like reach out and uh, reach out for that piece of wood you had. Or one of them. There are carvings on the back of a bench. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Mal is going to Uh, we want to find like a stick or something just something we don't have a bat so we can't start smash we want we want to start just like smashing things essentially like you grab can smash that specific bench with all the carvings yeah the we'll start with that one we all start right with that so one. many things happen at once first of all mel let me get a strength and brawl, please. Oh, that's not a great one. Uh, one success. One success. It's you versus an inanimate object. It's not like the difficulty is very hard. Jax, I need a composure and willpower, please. Or successes. Gentlemen, you hear the smashing of windows. You hear the raised voice of Jax, you assume, just from pitch and tone. And then there's the sounds of what could be a door, and then nothing for a few moments. What's going on outside as the two walk away? So, uh, CJ, uh, you've, you've, you've intimated that we may have unwanted company tonight. Uh, is there someone you're not expecting? Well, there's someone I'm definitely expecting. <clears throat> Possibly an other Posambra. This one. Oh, dear Rico. To my knowledge, does not have unchecked my emotions. Um, give me quite dangerous until I'm able to talk to them if I'm able to speak to them. We'll find out in due time. However, the prince creed on her honor that this individual would be babysitting us over here. So I'm not too keen about having to have that exchange of words anytime soon, but I'm sure it'll happen. So uh, you want me to maybe go on Overwatch and uh, just keep a uh, an eye on the on the environs and I'll holler if uh, something shows. That might be a good idea. Okay, so I will wander over to Rosalita. I will open the trunk. We'll take out the violin case. I will close the trunk. I will walk behind the trailer. I will uh, blend in the shadows. Mm-hmm. Unseen passage, or not, yeah, unseen passage, and I okay. don't rouse, so I'm okay. And I'm gonna climb up onto the top of the trailer, take out my violin, and very softly play um, "Kumbaya, My Lord." Okay, fantastic. While I'm keeping watch, great choice of medley. Yes, Javier. 
I'm not just saying stealth. <laughs> uh, you, I'm sir? gonna. Yes. Go ahead. Oh, uh, I'm going to sense the unseen. I'm gonna do you. I want to be able to a little better than that. Since you don't have sense the unseen, you have oblivion sight. Uh, that's not true. Oh, do I have an outdated version of your character sheet? More than likely. <laughs> okay. We, we had we so, had to fix it. We had to fix it last time. Remember? Yeah. yeah. I, but I haven't received an updated. That's all right. So let's let we'll go. Oh, I haven't sent you an updated one that's since That's all right. Then. You still have oblivion sight, right? Issue. Uh, no, because uh, the the way it worked out, I had to get uh, binding fetter instead. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. This but this I have effect. sense the unseen. Excellent. So yeah. you activate sense the unseen, and what I need from you, sir, is a wits and a cult roll. You may count your specialty. Okay, and I'd also like to rouse. To blood search? Yes. If you'd like to, yes. I mean, why not? <laughs> Speaking to Rico, I would probably blood surge also, putting it into my dexterity. I get hungrier. Okay. Javier, yeah, that would be three for first. you, yes. And I pass. You didn't, oh, no, you were the only one that succeeded your rouse check to begin with. That's right. That's okay. right. <laughs> Uh, so let's see, that's one, two, there is and that you said wits, right? Wits and a cult, and you may use your yeah. specialty. <laughs> it's always good when players snicker. Uh, this is Maraca of Death time for me. Uh, six successes <laughs> and a critical, I might add. Okay. All right. That changes things a little bit. <laughs> no. All right. So you surge. CJ, why what what is it that prompted you to tap the reserves of the potency of the blood? I just have this tickle on the back of my neck. Glasses um, smash. Doors open and close. Rico. I'm expecting that from inside the house because that's up, where those two went to. Javier doing whatever it is Javier's doing. I would be heading over to Javier to assist if I need There's, to, but definitely keeping an eye out. There is a violent, loud, smashing sound comes from inside the chapel. And the girls... Yeah, when, the sound from earlier did not come from the chapel. Correct. No, it was off to the right between them okay. and some cabins. That's the way that the two of them had walked. He Given would, what you've heard, after... one plus one might equal two. Something's going on inside. He would, after hearing that, bend over, pull up his pant leg, pull out his pistol. Okay. Take the safety off. Javier, whatever you plan on doing... Make it quick, and he would start to make a cautious step towards the chapel area. I'm just going to casually walk up to the chapel. We go. You begin playing Kumbaya. A few bars in, the song is noticeable by anybody that can hear it, and they know it. And there's a loud smash comes from inside the chapel. You see CJ bend over, pull out his 38. You see Javier 
take a right turn and head towards the building. As you get yourself situated on top of the trailer. I'm scanning the as far as I can see, which probably is not far considering it's kind of dark, but there is it's the dark. light coming from the trailer. And and the I'm full moon just is, is shining bright as can be. Oh goody. Um so I'm going to be looking uh I'm looking around for or anything from outside uh, presuming that whatever's going on Carlisle will take care of unless he hollers and then I'll be down um, but I'm looking for or listening for one or the other um, something exterior to where I know people should be or could be um, simple wits and awareness please oh, you don't Uh, one. Roger that. Um, as far as you know, whatever it is that you've seen is exactly what's there. There's nothing catching your interest in your periphery. There's no sounds that are emanating. Um, all the action is dead ahead of you as, as far as you can tell. Jax, Mel violently punches exactly where you were indicating the carvings that you and your friends had made over several years of rearing and coming up in the world and it obliterates in front of you it, it evaporates into shards and shatters in thrusting sections of wood flying away from you leaving splinters falling out of the air and his Mel obliterates the bench. There's uh, a piece that actually comes towards my direction, and the piece has uh, a picture that was burnt and carved in of a small bumblebee with a crown at the top. The name underneath is carved Luca. I pick up the piece and I trace my fingers over the bumblebee, remembering the sweet little boy who I helped take care of and read stories to and make flower crowns with and run around collecting bugs because he was such a huge fan of collecting bugs. And I remember this was one of the children who witnessed the horrors that day. It happened in front of him. Not just him, but in front of a whole bunch of smaller children. And my heart breaks. And I reach down into my boot and I pull out a lighter. And as tears are streaming down my face, I flick it on and I say, looking at the temple, Let's burn it down. Okay. No, I'm about that. <laughs> Nolan or Grio, Rico, there is a flash of unmistakable orange following that awful crashing sound, the unmistakable flicker of firelight illuminates on the windows, the slits of the door, between the cracks of ply boards that were nailed up to seal this place off. All vampires know this color. They know this motion of light. It's unmistakable. Fear. He told them. No fun. I did. I pick up my pace. You reach the door in, in a breath of seconds. It's not like you parked, you know, a football yard away. You and Javier are at the door in, in a, a blink. I open it up and I head inside. I'm expecting it to be open. The sounds 
you crash through the, the loosely closed door, the small pieces of wooden nails that were holding it closed, even the padlock that was placed there erupts from the wood. You see pieces of wood flying through the air, crashing against the floor, the sides of the walls, the unmistakable glow of a small fire between Mel and Jax as you enter. Yes, sir. What floor is this taking? It's on the main floor. It's on. Okay. Yeah, you walk in and this is what you, there's like these rows of benches like you would expect to see. They're pews arranged in front of a pulpit. What in the fuck are you two doing? We told you no fire. We can't draw attention here. Even though out in the middle of nowhere, they could still see smoke trails from miles away. No. Uh, Mal has, at this point, uh, grabbed a whatever piece of the bench, like a good stick. Sure. A leg of it, and has uh, already gotten a little bit of a flame going on it. Right? And she's now walking it around and just putting it to anything flammable. Around. And Jack you... is just standing in the middle, tears streaming down her face, watching it all burn. Do you want to get us killed? We're already dead. No. You're currently undead. There is a final death. Okay. Trying to give you the benefit of the doubt because of things that you've been through. However, you need to put that out right now. Have you? We're gonna look around. You walk in right next to Milliner as all this unfolds. The conversation erupts. What are you doing? I'm annoyed and waiting for a reason to There's do the something one further you know is mel or melissa walking around with a now lit piece of wood attempting to start fires in different areas uh i see you rico So, as soon as I see that there's more than one horse of fire, yep, I'm I'm jumping down and and running in, pulling out right. my thirty eight along the way. Roger that. So yeah, Javier, yeah. I think I'm gonna leap and try to uh, knock the fire out of her hand and stomp it out before she's able to set it. Okay, that would be your dexterity and brawl, sir. Goody. I'm definitely going to have to surge for that. <laughs> you already did. You oh, already, okay, perfect. You, you already surged the blood. As did Mr. Milliner. This is blood surge, by the Three way. Three successes. Three successes. Yeah. It's about as bad as best as Oops. <laughs> as the very well dressed. Yes, sir, Mr. Miller. Uh feed Mel that asks, cat. <laughs> she's Mel already asks, he has food. What is All he wants is to go back outside. And when she just came in, and then she's gonna be at the door and she's gonna cry. Come back in again. Can't I have familiars Mel until you go. What is a blood surge? Yeah, uh, I, I wanted to know what blood surging was because I th feel like I may, may need to do that. Ah, uh, okay. So OOC speaking, and for our viewers, blood surging is tapping into the potency of your blood based on your generation, in which to draw on the unearthly power that a vampire possesses because of the potency and the age of their bloodline, which in mechanical effects 
affords you to up a attribute. You pick which one. You gain dice according to the amount of blood potency that you have based on your generation. And that adds to the pool of dice for any challenges involving that particular attribute. And that Correct me if I'm wrong. Wrong point. Fair and it lasts for a full it lasts scene? For, it, last it lasts for a scene. Yep. But you can't switch like, oh, I'm, I'm using it for strength now, I want to use it for wits later. Nope. Nope. That's why if I you said blood specifically search for a particular mine as an example dexterity. Correct. And Javier, yours would have been strength or dexterity with your leap, right? That was what you were surging for. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. so that would stick. And likewise, if you were doing something along the lines of trying to dominate someone, you might blood <laughs> surge for an additional dot in a mental attribute. Does that make sense? Yeah. Viewers, can we get a thumbs up from our viewers? Our live studio audience even gave us a thumbs up. Okay, so moving right along. So, Javier, you roll your brawl and dex or your uh, strength and dexter or dexterity and brawl, leaping towards Mel with the intention to knock the, the now effectively a torch that she is moving about the dried wooden structure. Uh, Rico. Yeah, I'm, I'm just trying to get everybody's intent, so. Oh, Rico, uh, I think you're the only one left. I'm running into the building and assuming I can get Mel's attention, I'm throwing up awe and saying, you stop screwing up right now, or she's dead, and I'll fucking kill her. So yeah, Jax, you and Mel get on a happy fire kick. The doors are up Funny. open. <laughs> Mr. Milliner says what he does. You see Javier Grillo out of the corner of your eye as you contemplate the incoming inferno leaps at Mel a moment later Rico erupts through the door behind them pulling out a gun yelling at Mel your child did I just push everybody out lock the doors on them and leave me alone with the fire you can certainly try to. I'm going to try to. How would you like to do that? There's one thing you know certainly works. You've experienced it before with Mr. Milliner. Oh, I that think I know what that is. is loud and fucking clear in your mind. I think Rico knows it too, and I think I'm about to do it. Times of Armand. Times of Armand. <laughs> Yes, sir. I've spoken. I haven't actually declared an action yet. Okay. That is correct. You have some going... weed. Yes, I have. I'm going to browse for shadow cast. Okay. And I pass. Excellent. And I would like to would... shoot my shadow outstretched onto Mel commanding her with intimidation to put the fire out. All right. Uh, as as the and, as uh, tea goes to tables and books and pages. That Many things happen at found... once. I was just going to say that. <laughs> On page 293 and 294 sh Chicago by night. A moment, let me grab Chicago. Chicago. So basically for the studio audience, um, his shadow that he's portraying seems to animate on its own, and instead of reflecting from behind him, it's out stretching under his feet 
in front of him across the floor, attempting to reach out to get under her. I'm looking speed. good time. Speed reduced. It's not. A moment. It isn't like Arms of Araman where it's animated and 3D up in the air. It's still up against the surface. Yeah, no, my shadows are fun tendrils. Yes, they are. <laughs> power that just wants everything out of its fucking way. Mine still. So uh, of that. <laughs> from Mel, Jax, Javier, and Rico, I need a wits and awareness. No reason Hello? you don't want to get us two in the same room together is because, well, we're about to see. Uh, four successes. Four, four. Jacqueline, you said two. <laughs> Javier? All right, so everybody with four or three or more, you notice absolutely the shadows elongating away from CJ towards Mel. They are unmistakable. Jacqueline, that's not your concern at this moment. You have Rico, or, or is it, I'm sorry, Javier leaping at Mel. You've got Milliner drawing a weapon, pointing it, barking, and Rico popping through the door and instantly taking attention. It's a it's a conflagration. It's it's a fucked up moment. There's so much at once. The the pictures of your childhood have just been smashed to hell and you just willingly decided to set the place on fire. And this eruption of activity happens. What do you do? Oh, I have these tendrils that sneak out. Rouse the blood, please. I fail. <laughs> okay, the hunger increases. I'm at three hunger. <laughs> yes, you are. <laughs> Mel, as your intent attention is where because all these things happen at once. Where where is your immediate attention? Um well everybody is on our ass right now. So we are going to do our defensive a, maneuver. There's a presence at the front door. This exuding presence that absolutely demands attention. It's not overwhelming, but yeah, fuck. Recognize. What? I actually recognize this presence from last time, and it pisses me off even more. Fair enough. But what do you do in this moment? Uh, we are also going to rouse the blood and uh, manifest our arms. Okay, please. God, is this going nine ways to fucked up like we didn't expect? That is a, that is a ten. Okay, you, Wait, do you didn't not, expect this? You did not gain hunger. But likewise, uh, Jacqueline, from your point of view, as you're concentrating and summoning this thing in you, and it coalesces, you see the same thing occurring in Mel. It's your direct line of sight as you turn towards the clatter of, of noise and voices and body movements. And Mel exudes these tendrils, these tenebrous arms of Armand. Not that anyone's ever named them to you, but the shadowy things leap out. Javier flying through the sky. Mel, there's a body flying at you at, at, an, at an unintentable speed. You summon the arms of Armand. What do you do? We as are his... going to use 
their momentum against them, and just like we did the first time we met him, we're gonna try and basically uh, use our keto knowledge to like use his momentum against him. You know, throw him, throw him off to the side. Okay, so we're going to do a dexterity and brawl with your Aikido specialty. Yes. Okay. One, two, three, four. The uh, DM, um, when you get a chance in the Zoom chat. Zoom chat it is. successes and Javier your success for your role was also four successes correct three okay So, yeah, let me work this out because there's there's a lot of detail here. Javier, you leap through the air, perfectly aimed. Body momentum's right. You should be able to disarm this new embraced kindred with no problem. And as you near, the shadows erupt from behind Mel leaping at you and literally taking you off trajectory sending you into the ground crashing Bell the not the there's a pain as Milner speaks through the shadow cast commanding you to stand down or not take action or whatever it is he's trying to get across to you literally causes you pain as you take actions that are anything other than what he asks you in the form of superficial willpower. So that's one. It causes you suffering to act against the commands that come across to you from the abyss. Okay. Rico, you draw out your sidearm. You see Javier leap. You hear a milliner trying to talk the situation down. You see shadows from behind both of them leaping out, reaching. You see a pair of them take hold of Javier and body slam him to the ground from Mel. I need you to make a composure and willpower check, sir. This is all too familiar. Oh, yeah. Composure and willpower? Yes, sir. Cool. That's a good roll for you. Not when you get zero. Well, yeah, and there's and no re There's no, there's no re there, there, on a real power no check. I got zero. Um, you are frozen. You are frozen in the step. The sight of those arms again, welling up that moment where she was tearing your head off with fucking shadows, and the person behind her, likewise is throwing these things into the mix. Jax, what do you do as these arms come to life 
answering your call, commanding your word, or heeding your commanded word. So I don't it's, know how long or big they can go, but the idea is to basically swipe everybody towards the entrance of the temple and get them out. So as you think the words long and wide, you see them stretch out. Although you don't focus in on a particular person, so they don't really, they don't seem to coalesce as well. They don't seem to dance to the drum you're beating, but they definitely try to increase. The darkness envelops a little bit of the firelight coming from Mel's torch. As you see Javier fly through the air and get suddenly slammed down beside Mel, Rico comes to a halt. You hear Milliner's voice echoing through nothing comes into the back of your mind as if you're overhearing a conversation you're not meant to hear as he's commanding Mel to stand down, to stop, to take no action. Your arms or your shadows hesitate as you do. And the fire. <laughs> How's that doing? It's uh, right there at the tips of your fingers at the end of a lighter as you hold it to the wood in your pause of thinking. Gotcha. Mr. Miller. It, this all happens like super, super fast. Like it's bing, bang, boom. It, it happens that quickly. I stayed again. Put the fire out. I said 10 fingers, 10 toes. All of us are walking out of here. Burning his face down. There's nothing good that has ever come out of this place. It will be reduced to ashes. There's other ways to destroy this place. You can't do it with fire. Put it down. Javier, you recover from what was otherwise a practiced event to being slammed down into the hardwood floor of this place, untouched of Melissa. As you hear voices between her and Milliner traded back and forth, you can see Jax out of, the, out of your eyesight and the line of sight now that you can see past Mel, those awful shadows are also coming out of her, although they seem less intent I'm gonna get up and try and put out the fire we is there like a curtain or something anywhere like any cloth that's found flammable um this place has been pretty well stripped it looks like it's been prepped for demolition aside from the pews and lines of benches and chairs that are pretty much part of this place and bolted to the floors and what have you like they would be in any church um, yeah, there's not much left. There's maybe a, a pamphlet or two laying around. There's, you know, the occasional broken pencil. But otherwise, it's the destroyed bench that you just punched the shit out of. Um, and the other pews that are near you as the voice of Mr. Milliner comes across, but not to your audible self, to that voice that beckons to you from the abyss. His voice is coming directly out of that. Uh, so, what is the layout of this building? Like, is there a second story to this? Um, there's, there's a very high ceiling, but no, there doesn't seem to be a second floor. Okay. You're in, I guess here... Is there, like, an altar or something? There is a pulpit back behind Jax that is now to your rear as your attention is turned back towards Javier. Mr. Miller. So she can perform an action, but it would be against a intimidation check. Okay. So if she wins, she could perform her action. If she loses, she would take another superficial 
will power, but she can still perform right, right. the action. So okay. for you, the role is what? I would do um, manipulation mm-hmm. and intimidation. With your with your oblivion, right? Uh, it does not say I had an oblivion. The only thing that goes for oblivion in that role is how far I can stretch out the shadow, which is currently 18 uh, feet. Yeah, that's more than enough. Um, to physically stay under her. Okay, so Mel, it's it's as if a force is being impressed upon you. It's it's not just intimidating; it, it motivates your muscles to act against your will. So that's yeah. your resolve and your ooh. It's Milliner's Intimidation versus your resolve and what? What am I... No, it wouldn't be resolve and composure. It's going to be resolve and and, and ability. Storytellers having a brain fart. That's all right. I have them from time to time, y'all. I, I, I stamp my human card. I apologize. I know I'm supposed to be above such things. A, a kind? How dare you? <laughs> look, look. All we, all I wanted to do is have a nice bonding moment with my mom. No! No! Ah, deceased. <laughs> deceased. Final death. That's it. Done. <laughs> what do we not call him that? Is that not okay? No, 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 no. <laughs> so suggestions that you could do just straight willpower against it, or you can do resolve and intimidation as a reaction since she's attempting to yeah, but from make a Mel's, statement with this. From Mel's abilities. Oh, you hey, prefer? here we go. How about resolve and streetwise? Oh, hey. Oh. That's not terrible. Well, are you are you aware enough and alert enough to understand that you're being intimidated, or do you just succumb to it? On. Uh, Got you, Milliner. Three successes. Yeah. You're not sure what's happening, but in this instance, the older, more educated voice tends to wind out. The command's not coming directly from him. It's coming from that darkness. It's coming from that blackness that even you draw on to bring out these arms. It's as if they're telling you to knock it the fuck off. I have a question. Um, one of my convictions is none may control me. Mm-hmm. How do I? Do I have a reaction to this sort of? You you do manipulation. It's you have succumbed to it in this moment. However, the next time you do any kind of social interaction there will be a penalty and a potential for you to frenzy oh boy but in in this moment you are effectively intimidated the thought to act against his voice or his command is diminutive it's not that you can't But the cost we would will, be good. We will. Tr- We're going to just throw the torch off, and I guess like we're gonna actually like hang our head and just scream, it's like get the fuck out of my head, get out of what my you- fucking head. What and about stop the arms? What are they doing? You've slammed Javier. Um, 
they're it's probably... A lot for, it's a lot for your brain to process. They're it's... probably just flailing about, smashing things indiscriminately. Jax? What are you doing in this moment? So, there was hesitation. Milliner barks. You hear it, but not in the now. It comes from other voice, other... You you can tell where it's coming from, but you you just can't... You can't convince yourself yet yeah, it, that's where it came from, but it's there. It's hard to deny. And suddenly, Mel throws the torch down and begins just thrashing things with shadows, beating at benches or what have you. Hmm. Okay. So, do my arms react to hers? No, they react to you. To me. Got and it. it becomes very apparent that that is the case. I'm actually going to use my arms to bring Mel to me and wrap around us like a protective barrier. Rico, that that pause is over. All of this erupts in a matter I'm, of seconds. I'm running back to the trailer because I know full well they've got to have a fire extinguisher on site or some mm -hmm. sort of flame stopper, and I'm basically going back to grab that to come back and see if Do I can you, you put up the fires and, to get there and too bolt big. back out of the out of the chapel. Got it. Too many fucking arms here, anyways. <laughs> yeah, for me too, Javier. I'm still trying to put out the fire. <laughs> okay, so... Uh, what, would that, what, what would that be? It would be like craft and wits? Stopping it out. Well, just stopping it out, I guess. Yeah, um, sure. Because um, it's still on that torch, right? Yeah. Now, isn't... Yeah. You come out here. Isn't there, like, serious checks from us because there's fire yeah, well, and it's, we're vampires? It's not that it's erupted out yet. It's that okay. Jax, so is, little, Jax little, is holding a lighter, or was holding a lighter to a now obliterated bench, trying to light it on fire. Mel has successfully lit a piece of one and gotten a, a good piece of, of kindling going with a little bit of fire on the end that Javier is now trying to stamp out. So it's not like there's a raging inferno uh, that's uh, triggering Rawshrek or fire not frenzy. Not a dumpster fire. Guide right. or storyteller or anything. Yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> but there's definitely there's definitely that smell. There's that that little bit of carbon in the air. There's you know a little bit of butane for those of you who have heightened senses and can sniff things out like Rico and Javier. Um, there is definitely that 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 scent that something was put on fire but is now being attempted to be quashed. You see the arms. The shadows reach out from Jacqueline. They kind of go crazy for a moment, and then suddenly they envelop Mel uh, and, and tempt, attempt to tug. You see Milner, Fuck. you hear him. I understand. You... It's happening. We can do it in a controlled, safe way. From a distance, if you two intend on burning the place down. However, we're not going to act irrational, and we're going to do this as a team. You have to understand, we're not here to fight you with every single decision that you make. You're in public, even though we're out in the middle of the sticks. You're in public. A smoke trail can be seen from miles away. We do not want to attract attention. If it is your intent to burn this place to the ground, I don't have any objection, just not with you two currently in here and all of us in here with a chain gate outside and possibly somebody else poking around. Agreed? So as I draw Mel closer to me, I whisper into her ear, he's right. We have to protect ourselves. We cannot let this place get to us again. 
we have to stand down. And I relax my tendrils and withdraw them back inside me. Al will hesitate before she does the same. So yeah, CJ, Javier, as you stamp out the last of the little embers and the puffs of white smoke, you can see the darkness retreating into the two of them as they oddly embrace in the abyss. Strangeness occurs here at this farm, this Marrakesh farm, this place of dark events that have been logged in ledger books in the vaults of some of the family the Giovanni even this place has been marked in their history even though they have nothing to do with it then or even maybe now who knows Rico you run outside towards the trailer you get in look around briefly sure enough there's a class C canister sitting there hanging on the wall you snatch it turn around run back is there a fire axe beside it no this is planning office okay, okay. go back you go head back <laughs> i'll give you a wits and awareness please oh, you're liking that roll with me tonight <laughs> Two. Two. Nope. Yeah, you rush back in as you see Jax and Mel, the last bits of shadow receding from them back into them. I'm not sure. It's not your thing, but goddamn. How many times you got to see this? You hear the and last we're bits. We're actually hugging. We're hugging. We are. Yes. They're hugging. The last bits of Milliner's commands kind of echoing off the walls. Javier having stomped out a little bit of smoke escaping from where his foot was. I turn to Javier and I say, if there's anything that you intended to investigate here, I suggest we do it now. Soon I'm going to give them free reign to burn this place. I'm tired of this. Very well. Ms. Deary. I look at Jack Shackle. My dance card is now permanently full. Javier is going to reach into his pocket and pull out a handkerchief and he's going to open it he's going to pull up a small necklace Miss Deary do you recognize this before he finishes yeah you do yeah Mel there's a, there's a slight increase in sure in Jax's hugs as you hear the voice of Javier behind you The shadows sort of agitate in response to Jax's agitation. You know, was it his? Yeah, it was. He wore it, it everywhere, every day. Never took it off. Oh, and he'll never be free from it now. What do you mean? You will see in time. You're not doing that whole thing again, are you? You saw what just happened, right? There are two of us here now. I will wait until you leave. 
Let's take a walk outside. Rico, from behind you, you I'm hear... I'm staying with her. You, you hear a pair of footsteps enter the chapel. There's a a shadow again receding from the doorway. The only light, the pale gray of the moon bouncing off of structures outside as someone you've never seen before steps out of the shadow and just into the chapel. I raise the fire extinguisher like a weapon. I'm like, my dragon deals. Anyone else? Jax, you would see During someone... That, I would turn around. You would, you yeah, would see someone would coalesce behind Rico and Javier and CJ. Mel, you wouldn't see this as you're hugging Jax and facing the wrong direction. I tense up. And my shadows actually react again, slowly coming you, back out prepared to attack. I want you to rouse again, please. <sighs> you did cancel them and put them away. Okay. Yes, sir. So, are you considering this a new scene? And should I free rouse your shadow cast because I still have an active? I want to be fair about it. I succeed. <laughs> Zed. Finally. Excellent. Um, I, I didn't get a response on my Sense the Unseen role from earlier either. <laughs> yes, I'm aware. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> that... He's holding it. <laughs> Belay my last. Belay my I last can only eye. apologize. <laughs> Um. All right, so let me let me recorrelate. You guys are sidetracking me. Hold on. I, I'd say it is a separate scene, just because of the fact that we've That's got fine. a new player coming in. Everything else wound down. If we're ramping up, it's a yeah, new both, scene. I, both I just Mel, and, that Mel and Jax had both talked about re reclaiming their arms. So Mel, if you're striking them out again, or if it's just the coalesced shadows that naturally form around a La Sombra. Uh, it's more of the latter, just okay. like sensing uh, gotcha. Jax's distress yeah. is, yeah. Yeah, These mine's are that, out and yeah, on yours, guard. Yours are back out mm -hmm. as something coalesces in the doorway. Rico flipping around, pointing fire extinguisher in the doorway. Rico, you don't recognize the person, but CJ, Jax, and if Javier were to look, would all recognize Gerard from Elysium. Or not Jax, but Mel, Javier, and CJ. But Mel's turned the wrong way. So yeah, something coalesces into a person Seems to be smartly dressed. Um, reminds you of the way Milliner usually dresses. What's that, Mil What's that, CJ? Be hunger. Oh, nice. Everybody's getting hungry. I love it. Mm. Hey, this is a closed site. Uh, who are you and state your business? Anybody else have anything to say? What's going on? Rico, he's expected. Oh, this is, is unexpected. Expected? Yeah. <laughs> he kind of ignores most of the voices looking past everyone, pausing his sight only briefly on the back of Mel's head before locking eyes with Jacqueline. Child. Yes. Can we help you? Put those away. Now. Oh, 
long way. Bell, at this point, you hear a voice. It's vaguely familiar. You're not sure why or where from. We heard his voice there. You're not sure. The memory is scrambled. It's it's a little jumbled, maybe a little fuzzy in places. It's not entirely clear what what all you've gotten back from that memory. Mm-hmm. But Jack from certainly Elysium. from Elysium and also a vague memory of when you were sired. Yeah. A person who is present. Mr. Milliner, Mr. Grio. Gerard, is it? Good evening. It is. We didn't actually officially get to meet. I kept what? being cut off by the individual in the chair next to you. That's not entirely true, is it, CJ? We've met. Well, intimately, not personally. Anything we can help you with? He turns looking back towards Mel and Jax. What are you doing here? You shouldn't be here. And why did you bring her? (laughs) Uh, This was supposed to be cathartic. (laughs) Uh, We were supposed to destroy this place. around briefly at those gathered noted the machinery outside but they're silent so why are you here well to answer your question you were present upon your prince's request for us to investigate the property yeah. And to report such findings to you. Hence, that's why we are here. And as far as anything else that resides here, this is our jurisdiction. You give anybody that's looking now at Gerard it wits an insight if they wish. Mel, still this conversation is going on as the shadowy tendrils of Jack's enveloped you in a hug bringing you to her got you and then suddenly releases as another presence walks in that feels like it tugs at you got you got you the voice has a resonance that seems to move the blood in you it's an odd sensation it's almost controlling like it, it almost makes your knees change and move and makes your muscles want to react all the while Jax is slowly releasing you from an embrace um we are going to sort of stand in front of Jax between him and or her and him uh, and we're just gonna, like, look at this very irritating presence that demands our obedience. Uh, and we're just like, we're, like, I'm here because I want to be here. Oi! Oh, yeah. 
Amigo, you're asking a shitload of questions for being a, a guest, possibly a, 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 a trespasser. Why should we answer your questions? Why are you here? He snaps a look to Milliner. Mind your driver. He's not my driver. Now, Javier, you had four successes. Anybody had any more than three? No, I had five. You had five. I didn't roll. Um, you instantly see the shadows coalesce around this person. This is yet a third individual who clearly has a command of the abyss of the shadows and its workings. Um, yeah. Totally looks ready to suck the life out of something. The amulet you carry even quivers a short bit. There's a slight vibration from it, almost in reaction to the presence. Man did ask a question. I'm not here because I was told to be. Let's be clear on that. I'm here because of what's mine and the fact he makes a hand gesture that only CJ might notice. A slight circle made with a ring finger of his left hand. You're here to counsel your child or children at this point. I'm not here to tell you how to be a sire. You know that. I will tell you as long as these two are under my protection, you can handle that on your own time. They were invited here to assist in the prince's discretion. Anything you have an issue as far as that goes, you could take it up with her. As far as your own personal issues, I'm not going to stop you outside of here. That's a family ordeal. He quickly trades his glance with pretty much everyone. Let's be clear, Milliner. I'm not here because of a prince. Glances at Javier, briefly at Rico, although maybe a bit dismissively, maybe to his own detriment, who knows. Doesn't have a second glance for Mel, but again, looks towards Jax. Protection? You need protection from them? Me? You. Needing protection from these people. That's what he these said. These people who've been trying to help me this entire time. And what exactly have you been doing? There's a clear change of visage plastered on his face. The moment as he frowns, the the dimness even of the pale moonlight coming in darkens. The shadow within the entire entirety of, of the chapel darkens. Those without the ability to see within the abyss are blind. And if you can see in the abyss, you need to activate that ability, or you are blind. Uh, Faded. Um, yep. Doesn't require a rouse I check. Stop, drop, roll. Uh, Does that, do I have to rouse for that? Sense the unseen? You do not mm -hmm. need a rouse check for sense the unseen. Oh, okay. Uh, is that 
Oblivion Sight? That would be Oblivion Sight or Oblivion Eyes, depending on the way you built your character. We have Oblivion Eyes. Okay. So, so seeing as I'm blind, I'm literally stopping, dropping, and rolling, so I'm not where I was when we went, when it went dark. You all hear that. I'm expecting something to <laughs> But if you have uh, Oblivion Sight, you would have activated that to see in something that is in unearthly darkness. When that happens, I would move my shadow from under Mel and put it under Gerard. Okay. And to be clear, again, we're currently under your prince's bidding. After all this, you are more than welcome to have your personal business handled outside of here. I am willing to respect that. However, we're still investigating currently. Hence, that's the only protection I am currently providing is to handle business, and business comes first. Javier, while heightened senses allows you to in your senses, it does not allow you to see beyond unnatural darkness. But you are not unfamiliar with the abyss. It's not that you haven't seen this before. It's not that you haven't experienced it. It's just that this much of it in such a small space, two wielders of dark tendrils. And then this thing behind you casting its darkness out into an entire building you can hear Rico stopping and dropping and rolling you can pretty much tell where he's at your your sense of hearing even even the pressure changes from people moving the air those minute movements you can sense on the hairs of your body but sight <laughs> not this evening This one's got a trick or two, and it's pretty neat. There's that blackness in your soul that reaches out to it every now and then to ensnare something unawares, take control, be the control. Yeah, who's this guy? He was at that fucking Elysium shit. He got bitched around by the prince too. Is he one of us? I don't know. But he might be, or should be. Maybe useful. And he's chastising his children. That's always fun to watch. I'm enjoying the show. Miller, you can see him move forward. His darkness amongst the darkness glides easily past Javier, past you, past Rico, past Mel and behind Jax. But hold up my amulet. And I would say Shin, Lamed, Mem. You can strike, but you will feel his wrath. I implore you. He returns the expected response. Stopping behind Jax, placing black abyssal hand on her shoulder. The coldness is more than what should be there in this inky darkness uh, it's it's easy to tell that you're being touched I'm not here to cause harm child he doesn't break eye contact with CJ as he talks not that anybody else here could see that Yes. I would like to. Act, uh, I activated the bloody eyes, or I wanted to. Did you have more than three successes? Uh, you had two. 
right? I'm gonna check. Yeah, uh, I didn't ask for one, did I? <laughs> Never mind. Yeah, so yeah, it's it's at least noticeable to you in the abyss. Like you're becoming more attuned to this anyway, because every time you touch it, y you kind of like it. You're like, what else can I do? It, it's so, been pretty cool. <laughs> looking at this, you can see the darkness of this individual blow past the others, ignoring milliner the, that guy that lawyer flowing behind jacks putting a hand on her shoulder doesn't seem to act in a way that would make you think is is there going to be harm but what's he doing yeah you can well, see it we're just sort of watching them right now we're still Maybe scooting a bit closer to Jax, but that's it. And you feel this familiarity. There's there's the blood. It talks, it speaks. And now it's visually in front of you, from you to her to him. Or it, or whatever the hell he is. And it's all connected through these shadows. Even... Rico's touched by them, even Milliner, certainly Milliner. His shadows, his abyssal self, even right now, is underneath Gerard. It follows him as he moves. And Grio? Grio's a bit awkward. He's got darkness around him. His is strange at least as it, it, for your interpretation his darkness is fucking weird you can almost hear screams of things trying to get away from him you're not sure but this darkness yeah you're starting to feel more in tune and in touch with it I whisper, what do you want? We... Mr. Milliner reached out to me. And now I'm here. And I can see... It you need guidance that yours turns in the inky darkness you can feel a hand almost coalesce and point at Mel from behind you yours is going to need guidance or it will get you killed I didn't ask for your guidance. That's not an option. Mr. Milliner did. And I'm bound to answer. When I look at CJ, I just say... Index of his right <laughs> finger in that shadowy form pressed on your back traces the sign of a circle on your shoulder blade. He is your sire, and I did call him here. But it was not to speak to you, it was to speak to me. He releases the darkness that he's in, imposed upon the room itself. Rika, the wash of moonlight reflects again through the broken windows and the parted wood in the open front door. The disembodied voice gone? no longer disembodied but standing behind Jax with an arm on her 
or a hand on her shoulder. You abandoned me. You left. And now Petula you're back? child. Save your complaints. They're valid complaints. Yes, Rico. Um, does he currently have line of sight to me? Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's totally... Even though I'm all lying over. on the ground? He's up front towards the pulpit, standing behind Jax, yep. facing everyone else. The pews, the door. Yeah. I mean, as, at line of sight, maybe not directly, but it's, whether he knows you're near, there or not, kind of hard for you to tell. So I'm going to do Unseen Passage again. Okay. Sorrows? Yep, rolling. I get hunger. Mm -hmm. There's a hungry vampires in this room. Yum, yum, yum. And, and I'm going to move my way silently around the room so that I'm standing within direct earshot of CJ. Easy enough. Very easy to accomplish. It seems as no one no one was paying attention to you. The the focus followed this person called Gerard. When I get beside CJ, I'm like, you invited this Vendejo? And I would shake a leg at him. Why don't we drop all our parlor tricks? I called you, but you were not compelled to come here. You chose to come here on your own volition. You just heard my call. I think I know why you're actually here. He presses his hand down on Jacqueline. Almost as if trying to push her to her knees. Oh, I'm pushing back. I'm not going down easy. Okay. Uh, Mel is actually going to reach out and grab Gerard's hand and sort of just like flare at him. Or grab him by the wrist. Jax, um, if you're resisting, I need your strength and brawl, please. One success. <laughs> yeah. Um, Gerard definitely presses down on your shoulder uh, with with an intent potence um, buckling your knees to address Milliner, Rio, Rico, not even paying attention to Mel as Mel what leaps at him, grabs onto him? Uh, grabbing his wrist. The, the one, one that's, that's on, pressing uh, her down? Yeah. Okay. And what do you intend to do when you grab on? Uh, we're actually going to activate what is it? Prowess? I think? Like... We're actually trying to, like, you know... Intercede? Intercede, yeah. When I see the reactions, I'm just gonna call out to them, stop resisting. I'm not using anything special. Just calling out. Okay. So if you're, if you're pulling on the power of prowess, you need a rouse check. Seated. Hey. Thankfully. Actually doing pretty good on those rouse checks today. Okay, so that is going to affect things like melee damage and strength challenges. Um, so Mel or Jax is literally going to a knee. Um, there's a moment where there's a pause and you can see her try to resist, and then there's this push. 
and she goes to the knees. Um, you grab hold of his wrist and do what? Um, where? Let's see, how do I explain this? Essentially, like, as he's trying to pu- push her down, we're trying to, like, you know, uh, stop that, like, pressure being pushed down, like, literally trying to, like, uh, okay. you know, intercede in that sort of way. Roll your strength in Brawl, and you may add a die for your prowess. Oh, boy. This is not- the three of you see this this interchange of struggle and such occur Wait, you between said which one again? What's that? Your str- your strength and brawl, and you can add your die for your prowess. I would just call out to Gerard. You know they're not going to be able to overpower you. You don't have to show off. So tired of this. Don't, I don't Let's talk could do this out. Uh, he doesn't get to leave and then come back whenever he wants. This isn't fair. Or, yes, Rio? Okay. Mel, as much as you try, there is definitely a strength behind this that uh, is. Uh, un, un, inhuman to say the least and something you haven't encountered before and presses Jax to the knees um, the person's at least strength is impressed upon you overpowering you overpowering her and continuing not to break eye contact speaking with CJ as if the two of you were but flies You, you can't treat me this way. I can treat you as I desire. I can drink you as fast as I made you. Question. His vision flashes from Jax back to Milliner. Yes. Where was Jax's stake? Uh, in her corset behind her. Which is but now I'm pretty right much now. no, because you're 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 looking at Jax and he's behind her, so it would literally be behind her. And as she hugged you with arms of Armand, um, kind of hard for you to tell if she was having anything. I got that. So yeah, there's a. There's the barked exchange between them. He exchanges glances with Milliner again. He doesn't know Grio. He doesn't know Rico. And he doesn't bother looking at either of them. He continues to keep eye contact with you. His hand oppressively holding Jax at her knees and his ignoring of Mel sending the message that anyone else might catch but he never takes his eyes off of CJ you called I'm here I will do what is necessary and what is expected this isn't necessary you don't have to show off I'm not showing off according to whom who are you showing off to I'm not here to fight you, brother. I called out to you to talk. And I'm here. Then let them go and talk to me. And again, anything you want to do with them personally afterwards, that's your business. And I respect that. I'm looking to see why you're stuck under the shoe, under the high heel of the Camarilla when you and I know you have a purpose beyond the politics. 
doesn't take wits and awareness uh, for those gathered to see the darkness explode as CJ proclaims Gerard under the heel, the high heel of the Camarilla. The darkness explodes from him. Multiple tenderous and tenebrous arms leap out in reaction. And as quickly they retract. Um, most notably, Jackson Mel, you can feel the nothingness of the abyss leap out from your sire and grandsire, letting the two of you with a weight and gravity that you probably have never experienced. Maybe Jacqueline has dealing with CJ. I don't think Mel's experienced the gravity of the abyss inflicted upon her. It's an odd sensation. It's comforting and at the same time terrifying. There is nothing. There's no sound. There's no sensation. There's no anything. There's no temperature. There's no wind. There's no pressure on your eardrums. There's no anything. It is the abject absence of anything. Jacqueline, maybe for you, this is a moment, a respite. Like everything was taken away in a blink again. Maybe this is where it all stops and it all ends. And then it was gone again. That silence, that comfort teased once more into your conscious mind and ripped away just as quickly. Hey, CJ, you ever thought maybe that all these tendril people, you tell them what not to do, they'll do the opposite, so don't tell them, you know, talk to you. Tell them to fuck off and maybe hold now talk to you. Because apparently we tell them not to burn the building, they want to burn the building. We tell them to stay, they walk away. Later. We will speak, CJ, Milliner. He kind of floats, not so much as walks, taking his hand off of Jacqueline's shoulder removing his tenorous self back into him as he glides up taking a look to the left at Rico to Javier he pokes at the thing dangling in his hand be mindful of the things you tempt claim to protect what's mine, Milliner, then do it and get them done in this place. Can I answer my question? You've uttered several. Which one would you like me to specifically answer? The reason I called you. Why? Are you impressed under her heel when you and I know you have a greater purpose? Gerard again looks at those gathered in your uncaring nature of their presence and the questioning. We can take a walk if you want. Shalim, I have my commands, and I follow them without question. I do what is asked of me because it serves. And if I have to endure 
the righteous tower in all of its forms, then I endure no less than you will. So you are serving a purpose. I serve a purpose. Nods. Again, standing near Javier, taps the pendant. Do you know mine is special? Yes. You do. Yes. Be careful what you do with that knowledge, Mr. Grio. Mm. What's mine is mine, and it is the way of things. Mind that. That is fair. He turns back, looking at Jackson Mel. I will send for you both, and you will both answer. Is that clear? He's going to look to Jax. But this is where you say yes. Yes. Okay. Turn, turns considering Rico, Mel, Javier, and finally back to CJ Milliner. You claim protection, protect what's mine, and Shalim will make the balances right. I will always protect what is yours and what is his. Do you understand mine? 100%. You are, you are protected. Don't abuse the privilege. I am but merely an acolyte. And I am but merely a voice. He extends out his hand. Gerard does not hesitate, but extends his as well. He puts a hand over his other side and he says, Chim, Ahmed Men, till we meet again. Shalom to Med Men. And he fades, not so much as walking out the door, but becoming one with the darkness past it. That's a pretty neat track. Javier, take care of your work. Everybody else outside. He would turn around and walk out. It would be better if they just left. I get up off my knees. And I walk out. Uh, walk up to CJ. CJ. How could you? Why? I had to speak to him. Behind my back? Without it wasn't behind your back. First? It wasn't behind your back. It did everything right in front of you. I meant seeking him out. To guide me? He implied that. I clearly stated I didn't call him here to speak to you. And I'm all his, huh? So much for freedom, right? So much for making my own choices. We can discuss this further back at the hospital. But I did exactly as I stated I was going to do for you. I 
protected you. I stepped in between. And I kept my word. I just wish everyone would just stop interfering and just leave me be. And I walk away. I'm and scrolls. trying. Mel had followed Jax out, but did not interrupt that little thing. And as Jax walks off, Mel chases after her. So as Milner speaks, and Jax is confronting him, Mel following, Rico and Javier can hear the three bulldozers roar to life. The sounds of the D310s coming. Someone turned them on. The smell of diesel fuel burning, the stench of the carbon, the smell of fluids pushing pistons up and down fills the air. Javier. With the exception of Rico, it looks like everybody's leaving your building. Excellent. Or, Rico, sorry, if... The, the, yeah, the exception of Rico, yeah. Rico, if you want to stay and watch, you are welcome. <laughs> well, the arm, the arm people are out there, so I'm fucking here. <laughs> Very well. Uh, Javi is going to walk up to behind the pulpit. Mm -hmm. basically standing at the pulpit and I'm going to bind the fetter as, as, you, as you walk up and as you look about this chapel you notice that this sigil is like carved everywhere it's imprinted everywhere the energies of the place become much more apparent now that the demonstrative personalities are gone Jax, Mel, CJ, and Gerard. Their impressive natures, the darkness that follows them. You're not unfamiliar. It's the things that you draw on for power. It's where it all comes from. The place you have to reach. What do you do? What is the process of your ritual? Uh basically hold the medallion in my hand I'm going to uh, basically put my own vitae on it and I would be uh, chanting in Latin to answer me so a rouse check I assume for the ritual yes the cost of blood I do not get hungrier, but I do get hungrier because I put VT on it. Yeah, it's a pointer. Yeah, it's a right? double whammy. I just don't get too hungry. <laughs> See what you did there. <laughs> Everybody else. So, um, Rico, you probably haven't witnessed too many of these occurrences or any at all ever. This is. You know, akin to gypsy magic. You know, things that were done in Ravnos to fool the people. To get them to cough up their hard-earned money. But this is not that. There are energies so at play is sitting, here. Rico is sitting in one of the pews. He's got his arms spread out. He's got his feet on the pew up in front of him. And he's just, just watching, seeing what's going on. The words, I don't know how much Latin Rico knows. He knows Spanish, so he knows some. <laughs> sure, give me um, intelligence um, in academics. Damn it, yeah. Yeah, I have a cult, by the way, so that matters. Uh, cult, yeah, you could use a cult. Uh, two successes. You catch the occasional word, 
dark master, devil, darkness, you know, some of the things that, that have remnant words and the languages of the romance. But your Latin's not that great. Uh, you might catch the casual hint of Diablo or Fuego, you know, the night, the weight. Not that. Yeah, there's there's not much to catch, but there's enough to know that he's calling on something dark. You've heard enough rituals around Ravnos uh, encampments and what have you to know that he's doing dark magic. He's doing the dark bidding. And sure enough, you can feel the the energies change in this place. Javier, as you intone and encant the words of magic, the words of ritual, as you slice a wrist, willing your blood to the surface and giving it to the device, you can sense the change. You can feel the abyss, the dark reapers as they offer up the cackling face of one Ezekiel Ephraim White as it takes a a ghastly or ethereal form at least in your vision circles the drain as if you had just flushed a toilet and its bottom its hole being that of his own pendant for the Brotherhood of Malachi. The crescent moon vibrating in your hand, the stars, the semblance of the sun. It doesn't burn. And you hear a cackle, an echo, a memory not of yours. I will be with you forever. <laughs> Echoing out of the abyss. Oh, you will be with someone. <laughs> you know in the core of your being that you have enslaved a soul in some way. You have a control, a connection. This place now has a pulse. Its experiences become shadowed whispers of memories, not full pictures, but the occurrences, the dark event itself unfolds in a form of understanding for you. The death, the sacrifice, the terror, the fear, the horror, Every bit of it echoes as that voice dissipates and dissolves into the vibrating pennant in your hand. Rico, there's a weird look on Javier's face. Yeah, it's, I'm a, I'm a little disturbed by his uh, comment. Predatory. It's there. It's like. All righty then. He looks like the mountain lion that just caught the wayward hiker. Goody. CJ, you exit out. Followed shortly by the rushed footsteps of Jacqueline and Mel. As you can feel the abyss change behind you as you exit the chapel. Whatever it is Javier was going to do, he immediately went about doing it. And there's no mistaking its touch and its taint and fingerprint on the abyss. He would continue to the car, opening the rear door and just looking at his the girls. Hmm. 
I don't look at him. I don't say anything. I just look out the window. Better if we just burned it to the ground. Get in the car with them? Yeah. I, I let myself. <laughs> CJ closes the door behind Mel and Jacqueline, turning around the rear of the vehicle into the driver's door, opening it, getting in, and closing the door, even seeing the engines rumble to life, no drivers in sight, paying them no mind. And this is where we're going to pause our scene for the evening we'd like to thank you all for joining us for this wonderful ride that is the Prince William My Night Season 2 Night Shift we hope you all hang out check with us after we get back we will happily run a PSA after our credits roll and like we do every night when we finish for the evening we like to go around the table get a high low and a nomination for the evening and this evening we're going to start with mr javier grillo well my high was obviously my plan moving forward phase one check right <laughs> uh my low obviously uh getting tossed yet again <laughs> And, uh, uh, right. For MVP, I'm going to have to give it to CJ. Uh, he kept his head in the midst of all the uh, adjacent fuckery, as you will, uh, and did well with that. And also handled Gerard pretty well, I think, too. So um, that would be my vote for MVP. Excellent. Mel, Hilo and Anom. I... Things didn't go completely like belly up with Jax. Uh, a low would be that we did not succeed in burning down the horrible, horrible farm. <laughs> I think I want to give a nom to Rico for uh, putting up with my shit. <laughs> Thank you. I didn't Man. want to have my head taken off again. <laughs> Fantastic. Rico! Uh, I'm going to say um, well, the, the, the low is that there's more people with tentacles. I don't need more people with tentacles. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm done with the tentacles. Damn the sombra. Just, tentacles bad. Tentacles bad. Um, <laughs> uh, the high basically would just be the... Um, it, it was terrifying as shit, but that whole standoff that was happening with uh, uh, Mel trying to burn the building down, Jack, you know, in on it. DJ and, and, you know, Javier trying to do stuff, and I'm like, I don't know. I, I'm completely fucking ineffectual yet again. Yay. Um, <laughs> so, you know, but it was good. It was a really nice sort of like, oh, crap. This could, you know, we could we could have a TPK happening in about three minutes, and, <laughs> you know, we're dead. Look, your characters, boys and girls. Um, for my nom, oh, um, an interesting one tonight. It was a it was, it was a good good night uh, all around. Um, I'm I'm gonna give it to Mel only on the basis that apparently everything Mel touches turns to shit. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's like, oh, look, we're just gonna go over here. Oh, let's burn the building down because we were explicitly told 
Well, not to burn the building down. So let's <laughs> burn the building down. Oh, there is a there there is a specific reason for that, and I will explain maybe one day, maybe never. Oh uh, no! I think the answer is this: whenever we tell you to do something, I'm now going to just start telling you the exact fucking up. Whatever you do, do not get in my car. I don't want you in my fucking car. Right? <laughs> Whatever you do, get the fuck out of here. Just go, leave, be gone. Because then you might stick around and get in the fucking car. Fantastic. We got in the car without a, ha- a hassle this time. I will have you it know. I had to break my radio, though. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh, a little vandalism. Oh, little Jax. So my highs, so many surprises tonight and things that were revealed that I was not expecting nor ready for <laughs> in the slightest. Now everybody um, who wasn't I'm... there can go back and rewatch last week's episode. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I'm, I'm kind of glad that I didn't, though. And I'm kind of glad that my reactions worked out really well and we just went with it so and if you viewers are cheating and seeing this without seeing last week's episode shame on you shame on you shame shame shame, shame. 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 three episodes ago because last episode was just before this one so yeah right a, yeah two three episodes you yeah. see episodes That's if you're the, coming those are the ones you talking about genuinely terrified when you had to make that like roll after I smashed the bench <laughs> like actually oh the, my composure to see if I would do anything yeah, about it yeah. Yeah. No, I was I was genuinely <laughs> shaking <laughs> uh yeah I, I'm I'm very impressed and happy so far with where Jax's character is going and I can already see her slowly finding her voice and standing up for herself, which is great. That's a high for me. A low is Mel calling me mom. <laughs> that wasn't in character. Mom. That was not in character. Mommy. Uh, no, my actual low is Rico, I need to figure out how to interact with you, man, because every time you re- you interact with Jack, the first thing that comes out of mind, my mouth is, uh, uh, you rock in the cradle. You need to go somewhere. Yeah, hold on a moment, though. Who are you That's holding hands with and having a moment? He's extremely <laughs> relative in Vampire here. World. He's still a <laughs> fucking character. Hold on a minute. <laughs> I love, like, I'm fucking... just being flirtatious. I don't have any desire behind any of it. It's just me being whatever. You're fucking Canadian. Now I'm fucking terrified of you because it's like fucking arms. Don't worry. You want to get flirty? I'll get my tendrils on you. Don't worry. I got oh, you. Oh. It... You, you all, look, We're for our viewing audience, they have read each other's consent forms. This is quite okay. <laughs> so, Jack, do you uh, have a, a low and a nom for us? <laughs> oh, I uh, was shadowy tendrils, and I was right? like, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. My, my nom is, is uh, yes, uh, between CJ and Mel. I loved you both. It was awesome playing with you guys. <laughs> Thank you. Mr. Milliner. Last but not least, Mr. Sir. Milliner. Ah. Finally getting Javier to get some fucking screen time. <laughs> that is my high. I I like how he's reserved. I like how he observes a lot. Um, but it's just nice to start seeing his character developing. Um, my only low for the entire episode was I was trying to message Mel to try to look into the camera more, um, when doing dialogue, but her performance tonight in character, um, I felt was definitely excellent. Um, excellent character development, excellent evolution of her finally confronting her sire with that whole spiel her with finally starting to come to her senses for the love of god um, <laughs> I'm tired of cleaning up the fucking mess um, so that is my nomination for Mel excellent so Yay! high low high low and a nom for me high 
was definitely focusing in on the subjects that we got uh, with the confrontation between Mel and Jax and Javier finally getting to step out and 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 really start to show himself because he's been very restrained, very withdrawn, very in the background, as it were, and finally steps up at the last moment going, <laughs> okay, kids, let the gentleman play. Um, <laughs> as he whips out his dominance in the spiritual realm uh, and with a witness, no doubt, Rico, you know, Rico gets to see, oh shit, these guys calling themselves the family, the the the, the clans of death, they do fucking do this shit, and it's happening in front of me. So that yeah. was kind of you know a high for me was being able to to have Rico witness that kind of stuff because it's not like the Ravnos are into this kind of thing. You know, them as a clan, this is not their thing. It's not enslaving souls um, <laughs> for whatever purposes that might come to show. Um, so, yeah, getting getting Rico into that is great. Um, having CJ take the position of recognizing another member of his, of Shalem who actually answered him through ritual um, and having that person not only answer through ritual but show up and answer to his call you know that's a that's a really big thing for CJ to, to see that his belief is not for want you know it 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 manifests in proof and here it is it's real <laughs> in the not only Gerard answering up, but the proof in Jax and Mel is more belief building for CJ than probably anyone else in the Coterie. Like, here's the hand of Shalem at work, and I'm getting to witness this shit. <laughs> so that's a high for me. Um, I don't really have a low this evening other than no, I don't have a low this evening. That's uh, we have the that's stock. Been, <laughs> yeah, the low is the low is that we don't have three or four more hours worth of recording to do. Uh, right. Well, we do have it to do. We're just not doing it. Doing um, it right now. Yeah. Tonight, we're not doing it tonight. Um, the cat's meows when the cat meowed was like perfect for like just the random, the random noise. So good job, cat. Um, I'm sorry, like, it wasn't this cat, it was the other one, but, like, she, when she doesn't get, when I'm not paying attention to her, she gets very pouty, and she starts to, tr like, you know, hey, 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 yeah, That pay sounds like our viewing play audience, with when me. we don't pay attention to them, they get really pouty, and then, we, like, the comments blow up with all this negative shit. Hi, audience, oh, you're there. <laughs> Um, it's basically, uh, give me attention or I die. Right. Um, but no, I don't have a low for tonight. And and while, Mel, you got the numbers and you picked it up, I would give it to Javier this evening for just having that, that one moment that spoke to Javier's, like, essence. Like, it, it cut to the bone where everybody else gets to dance around the different aspects of their their personality and their wants and desires. Javier's like, no, I'm going to be quiet. I mean, bright spotlight in the middle of the darkened ocean. I'm here for a transaction. <laughs> I'm, I'm here <laughs> for this. <laughs> Javier definitely gives Melissa the creeps, and a lot more so. <laughs> he, should. he really should. <laughs> he should give everybody the creeps. Javier's very creepy. So uh, yeah. Mel, you get like, the you get the extra XP this week, and everybody else grabs their two. Um, for our viewing audience, please hang out. We do have a, a a nice message from our cast and characters and our players about mental what mental illness and you know what what it means to us. Uh, please stick around for that. 
Um, and we will catch you all in our Zoom chat or our Discord chat after the fact if you happen to be a participant. If you're not, ask any one of these fine people and we'll tell you how to get involved. Thank you again. I am the Dark Druid, and we will see you on the next Night Shift. Hello, my name is Troy Chapman, and I play Rico Suede on Prince William by Night, the Night Shift. I'm here to remind you that your mental health is a very important thing. We all have problems, and I do mean all of us. I personally have suffered from both clinical depression and suicidal ideation. Sometimes it can be hard to share our issues because we don't want to burden other people, or we're too afraid or ashamed of the things we have done or the feelings that we have to even try to reach out to other people. But friends and family are here for a reason. They would much rather hear that something is happening in your life and help you with it than to find out too late that they didn't even know and they couldn't even try. If you feel that you can't talk to your friends or family, there are other resources available for you to talk to. Please take advantage and reach out to them. There is no need for you to go through this alone. We all need help sometimes. There is absolutely no reason to feel ashamed or afraid to ask for assistance, especially if you need it right now. If you or someone you know is in crisis, whether they are considering suicide or not, please call the toll-free lifeline at 800-273-TALK to speak with a trained crisis counselor 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. The National Suicide Prevention Lifeline connects you with a crisis center within the Lifeline network that is closest to your location. Your call will be answered by a trained crisis worker who will listen empathetically and without judgment. The crisis worker will work to ensure you feel safe and identify options and information about mental health services in your area. Your call is completely confidential and free. Again, that number is 800-273-8255. If you are unable, unsure, or prefer not to speak in person, text the word NAMI to 741-741 to connect with a trained crisis counselor to receive free 24 by 7 crisis support via text message. You are not alone. Trained expert advocates are available 24 by 7 to provide confidential support to anyone experiencing domestic violence or seeking resources or information. Help is available in Spanish as well as other languages. Call the National Domestic Violence Hotline toll-free at 800-799-SAFE. Again, that is 800-799-7233. If you or someone you know has been sexually assaulted, help is available. Call the National Sexual Assault Hotline, toll-free, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, at 800-656-HOPE. Again, that is 800-656-4673. You will be connected with a trained staff member from a sexual assault service provider in your area, that offers access to a range of free services. For the Disaster Distress Helpline, call 800-985-5990 or text the word TALK WITH US to 66746. This helpline provides immediate crisis counseling for people who are experiencing emotional distress due to any natural or human-caused disaster. This multilingual, confidential, and free helpline is available 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Again, call 800-985-5990 or text TALKWITHUS to 66746.